So in part one of tokenomics, we went through some fundamentals and basic concepts like circulating supply, max supply, total supply, you know, the FDV, so fully diluted value, the market cap. And then we finally looked at the vesting structure, got a little bit into cliffs, locks and unlocks, and how does that impact price? So in today's video, I wanna take a deeper dive and look at the dynamics of supply and vesting schedules and how they impact price. I think this is a critical component that gets overlooked in the due diligence phase and people get lazy and they just don't do a deep dive. Also, there's a lot of alpha in understanding tokenomics and how those release schedules work. So I hope that you find something of value in this video that helps you within your journey when taking a look at projects and dissecting them. For those of you who are new, welcome. My name is Colin. What I do on this channel is that I look at projects with solid fundamentals that I believe would do well in this market. Also, I enjoy teaching and learning about concepts, so that's why I'm covering this video. I hope that you get some value out of it. I found a lot of alpha within tokenomics, things that I wish that I would have learned before I started in this market. I'll link in all of the important links in the description below. And if you like this video, consider subscribing towards my channel. I will continue to do these educational videos. Now, before I get started, remember that none of this is investment or financial advice. The crypto market is extremely risky and most people lose their money. So you want to make sure you do your own due diligence and research before you get in. I'm also not sponsored by any of the projects that I mentioned on here. This is all of my own thoughts and how I analyze things. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So before we get into those important factors of how prices can be affected, let's review some basic definition together. So the emission rate simply means how often new coins or tokens of this project are created. And then opposite of this, the burn rate is how fast or the speed at which these tokens are taken out of circulation. So a good example of this is Ethereum. If you look at ETH right over here, the emission rate is roughly 2,500 ETH per day. The burn rate is roughly 1,200, therefore giving you a supply of close to 1,300 ETH per day. And during the last video, we went over some very important concepts in terms of the vesting schedule, the unlocks, the cliffs, and how those work together. Let me just quickly review them for you. So this is a vesting schedule right over here. It tells us exactly what tokens are released, when they are released over time. If you take a look at Mavia's vesting schedule, it shows you right here so that you understand month by month what exactly is coming into the market. And besides taking a look at the chart view, I also take a look at the timeline view as well. Let me show you an example from one of my favorite projects, Alluvium, illustrating if you understand tokenomics and the release schedule, how you can position yourself for a most favorable outcome. If we come right over here and we take a look at this, we could see that the Alluvium vesting schedule, the TGE is the token generation event. We talked about that. That's when tokens become live. Notice on the TGE, everything is zero here except for the public sale. So the public sale gets 100% of their token. In the last video, we talked about cliff. So what is a cliff? A cliff is simply a period where tokens are locked. And if you take a look at the seed investors, the team, notice they have a cliff of one year. So all of their tokens are locked all the way up until March of 2022 before they get released. Notice the team has a cliff as well. So earlier on, what it shows me, the pre-seed people right over here, they have a cliff of one year. So in this one year period, notice most tokens of the early investors are locked. So at that time, there's not a lot of major sell pressure. The only sell pressure is coming from the public sale right over here, which is very little token compared to the other people where they are up hundreds of X by the time the market goes live. Now, let's take a look at price and how that impacted price. And if we take a look at the ILV token, Alluvium's token is trading at $84 a day. Of course, it is not as high as what it used to be in the 2021 bull market. If you take a look at the stats right over here, it's 365 million. Its FTV is only roughly about twice that value because 50% of the tokens are already in circulation. But if you go down right over here, you can see its all-time high was $2,800, almost $2,900 per token. Okay, This was back in 2021 at its all-time high. And if we just pull in, take a close look right over here Okay, in that time period where it was running up. Now, if you take a look here, you could see that in 2021, the token in the right environment with a bull market, and if you're thinking about tokenomics carefully, you'll know that there's not a lot of tokens coming to the market because when we go back to the ILV chart right over here, you can see that in 2021 to 2022, all of these were locked, right? All of these were locked. All of the early investors and teams were locked 
into 2022. So when you go back to that chart and you see right over here, all the way to 2021, I know right now it's not a bull market, but it was the perfect condition and storm. So when I'm understanding tokenomics, I'm saying to myself, okay, so these set of tokens are going to be locked in a very favorable bull run environment. That token has a chance to really skyrocket. So this is what I mean by understanding tokenomics and really using it to your advantage. So the more you know, the better it is. I can guarantee you that 90% of this market with the asymmetric information that are out there, people are lazy. They don't do the hard work by thinking about the tokenomics and thinking through the project. So make sure that you're also taking that time to really look closely and think about the different market cycles and how the tokenomics can come into play. So now that we had a chance to look at the basic concepts of vesting schedules, let's take a look at three factors that may impact price. The first factor that I'm gonna look at is the size of the unlock, because the more tokens that are unlocked, that may overcome the demand driving down the price. The second factor is liquidity. Sometimes projects would do liquidity generation events that may drive up the price because they may be using it for another purpose. And then lastly, we'll talk about the perps, so the perpetual future contracts and how they can impact price price. So the size of the unlock is a critical factor because you can imagine if too many tokens are coming to the market, it's going to overpower the demand. One of the best examples of this is the Flow project. I'm not going to go over all the details, but it's trading at 87 cents today. And at one point, I kid you not, it was trading over $46 a token. And Flow was one of the hottest talked about projects that launched at that time. They called it the people-centric layer one blockchain. And if you look through their partnerships right over here, we're just going to go down and take a look at the brands of Flow. You could see they work with UFC, you know, Top Shots, NFTs. At that time, they were getting on the NBA and then the NFL was coming. They work with Circles. So all of the major Web2, Web3 brands was working with this company. So quick glance through the tokenomics, you could start to see some of the key metrics I talked about. Now Dapper Labs got 20%, that's who the project belonged to. The development team, 18%. So that's talking about 38%. Large backers, 11%. That's 49%. And then roughly small backers, roughly 9%. So if you add them up, that's roughly 58, 59% that is going towards the team and the early backers. And when we take a closer look into their vesting and release schedule, you can start to see some of the cracks occur. Now, up until this point right over here, we have a release of 20 million tokens, 50 million tokens. So up to here, there's only seven million token but by October of 15th of 2021 look at the amount of tokens that came to the market within that month and day okay that's more than 250 million tokens so when we add them all up there's roughly 315 million tokens in circulation but there's three times the amount of tokens that were coming and this would overpower the demand and then also these folks right over here this 175 million these are the pre-launch backers okay so these were the earlier sale so notice right over here developmental team so some of these people got their tokens at roughly 10 cents. The price of the token was trading at $18, $19 that day. So what that meant was these people were up 190x on their tokens. And this was about to be unleashed onto the market. And if I just pull up my chart right over here, you could see flow to USDT tether right over here. Here's October, here's October 11th, and here's roughly October 15th. You can see that with 300% of the supply coming to the market, the market took a dump because the supply just simply overpowered that demand. And you can't really blame these people because they were up 190X. Most people at 190X would start dumping. So the price did dump. It dumped by more than 40, 50%, and a lot of tokens came to the market. So this is a a perfect example of when huge unlocks come you have to pay attention to them so the second factor is liquidity and we're gonna see how liquidity can affect the price by stabilizing the price and continuing its uptrend or liquidity can be used against us as retail investors where the early backers need to exit the project and we become exit liquidity so let's take a look at these two right over here so first thing to understand is the over-the-counter market what is over-the-counter well over-the-counter is when two parties can come together they can decide upon a trade execute that trade and bypass the centralized exchange now this may minimize impact towards price. Now how does that help the price? Well, it helps the price because early investors where their tokens are locked and they want to transfer that risk to somebody else. 
Here we have a new investor. They will be buying those lock tokens. Buying those lock tokens with the hope that those tokens will continue up. Now, if this process happens a lot between an early investor whose token is locked and a new investor who's buying it over the counter, this may help stabilize the price because you can imagine the new investor is trading the tokens very similar to what the market value would be at that time in the hope that when the tokens become unlocked, the market value is higher. So the more over-the-counter trading, the closer it will be to the real market value. So when the tokens do unlock, these new investors, if you can imagine this process happening over and over and over again, they will be more likely to hold the token. Therefore, price will not drop on the day of those unlocks. Now, the second part, which is the part that I feel that all of us need to be more careful about, is when projects need to generate a huge amount of liquidity so that on these major unlocks, the price doesn't drop too much, therefore allowing them to exit the market. So when I say they exit, I'm talking about the early backers, the team, the founders, people like that, so they can exit the market, making retail the exit liquidity. Now, there's two ways that they do this, two common ways. Number one is they generate liquidity. So a liquidity generation event. If you take a look at the past market, you can see that sometimes they come up with these crazy APYs, these really high yield staking that rewards you with an astronomical percent yield. Two crazy projects that came to mind was Wonderland Time and Olympus Dow. Now, when we take a look at the past market, notice they're offering up to 83,000% APY. When you take a look at this, it screams scam all over it. In crypto, there's a very popular saying, if you don't know where the yield is coming from, then you are the actual yield in the room. So when I see stuff like this, I immediately the red flags go up. Same with this one right over here. You could see the yield is 7,300%. Notice the TVL of 1.9 billion. So they're basically incentivizing people to stake at such a high yield. Scam written all over the tokenomics. And of course, if it wasn't obvious enough, these protocols and projects went out of business. So another example of liquidity generation event for the team and projects is the ApeCoin. Now, when I take a look at the ApeCoin, it's trading at a buck 10 today, but at its height, it was trading at $39 during the last bull market. And of course it dumped like everything else, but it's down 97%. Now in April of 2022, Yuga Labs goes and launches another collection. These are the other deeds, they're land parcels, okay? There was 55,000 of them that was coming to the market. And when we look back on that sale, it was basically an NFT sale. They generated $317 million, never mind the chaos that was going on. People lost thousands of dollars in terms of the gases, the fees, and everything else. It was a chaotic mint, but they actually sold out $317 million. And when you look at the actual cost, it cost 305 ApeCoin which totaled $5,800 at that time. Notice generating them 16.7 million ApeCoin that was used to mint the other side, okay? So 317 million, that's where they made that record setting NFT mint. So just jumping over the chart right over here, I could see ApeCoin and USDT Tether. And if I go back right over here into April, okay? So this is April. And if we look right over here, starting from April 18th, you could see that it started to trend up, okay? All the way down from $10, it started to trickle up to 16 dollars 17, 18, 19 dollars, over 20 dollars, and at the wicks, you know, the wicks are the high end to 27 dollars. You could see that ApeCoin was being driven up to April the 30th at that mint date where everybody needed that. So this is an example where the project owners, whether it's Yuga Labs or any other project, they're using something, whether it's staking, coming up with new NFTs, and in this case, land, having you as retail holding onto your coins, you're actually buying up more coins because the price is going up, right? You're buying up more coins so that this way you can participate in those mint, swapping in your tokens, allowing somebody else to use you as exit liquidity. The last factor that can impact price are the perps or the perpetual future contracts. Now we're not gonna get too deep into these because this is an advanced topic, but how they may impact price is the following. Traders can use them to short a project or short a coin. Investors can use them, especially early investors, to protect their initial investment and hedge against an unfavorable price movement, especially as we're moving closer to unlocks. Now. Let's say that there was a huge unlock, and the example I'm gonna use for this is also the ApeCoin. So on September 17th, ApeCoin was going to unlock 40 million ApeCoins, so 11% of the supply equating to roughly 58 million that would be coming to the market. You would expect the market to drop, 
but actually the opposite happens. So going on to our USDT trading view chart, we could see that here 16th, here September 17th, this is when the unlocking, the heavy unlocking would happen. So in anticipation for the unlock, you could see the ape coin has already been on a downward trend. You would expect this thing to get demolished and go all the way to the bottom into the trash. But what actually happened was that on the 17th, when the unlocking of all of those tokens happened, the price bounced. You could see it bounced in the opposite direction. Now, why did this occur? So on one side, the traders are hoping that after the unlock, there will be a huge dump. So they're out there Ape. But the initial investors, the buyers who want to protect their tokens, as their tokens become released on the unlocking date, they're actually unwinding that short position on those perps. And as they unwind it, the market goes in the opposite direction, causing all of those traders who are shorting the market to also have to close their short as well. And what happens is that the market rebounds. So that's why sometimes you see these perp contracts being used the price goes in the opposite direction of what you would have expected had you not considered it. So these are some of the factors that can certainly have an impact on price if you haven't considered them already. So I hope that you learned something of value in this video. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing towards my channel and I'll continue to bring you more content like this.